In the previous video we used git from the terminal. Let's now do the same thing but from within Visual Studio Code. Let's go to the activity bar, we see here the icon source control, click on it and you will see that this is grayed out. Even though we have git available inside the MCS2 system, Visual Studio Code needs it on the Windows side. So let's go to install git, open the website, go to downloads, we are on Windows right now, and it will download the installer. Open it. Next, next, next. So here we have the option where we can set the default branch name. Override it and set it to main. Next. Here we have the option, which we also set in the terminal, to automatically convert between the Windows type of line feeds and the Unix style. Next. I can leave most of these options as they are. Let's install it. It's now installed. Git comes along with a bash shell. So let's launch it. I'm going to make the font a bit larger. So in here we can type the git command. The only option which we did not set yet is the identity. So we can do that. Set the username. And let's also do that for the email. Let's see all the options that we set over here, including the install. So most of the options are now in program files, git, etc, git config. This one we also set in the terminal. This one we set in the terminal, and the default branch we set in the terminal. The last two we just edited inside our bash shell. And these are stored in our home folder on Windows in the .git config. We're now set. We can do inside Visual Studio Code a reload of the window. And now this option should be available to us. We can now click Initialize. We can see the same as that we did in the terminal, but now we see the symbol U for untracked. We can add files, stage them, and let's stage the make file, the F90 file, and the readme. So now these three files are staged. In order to generate a .git ignore, we need an extension. So let's look for that. Git ignore, and we choose the one of code zombie. Install. We can now go to the command palette and look for git ignore. Choose add git ignore and first we're going to add the Visual Studio Code. It now creates a .git ignore. We can view it and these are also the settings which we had in the terminal. We can do it again. Add git ignore and now select the one for C++. Append. We now created the same dot get ignore as before. So let's save it and go back over here. So also the get ignore we can now stage. 
If these four files, go here to the message, initial commit. With enter, we can continue on the second line. To commit, click on the commit button. We've now made the commit. We need an extension to view the git log. So let's go to the extensions. Look for git history, choose this one and install. We can go back to the command palette and we now have a git view history which is the same as git log. We can now see our initial commit, the person that committed it, the commit identifier. So this is identical to what you have in the terminal. Let's do another commit. Change the file, fix the typo, save the file, go over here. You can see that this file is modified, stage the file, and add the commit message. Fix typo and commit. Let's view the history again. Refresh and see the two commits that we did. Now let's push this to GitHub. I created a GitHub account. I logged in, but I did not do anything else. So from Visual Studio Code, we can now go over here, publish to GitHub. The extension GitHub wants to access the account, allow. If you do this for the first time, it will ask for, for your username and your password. I want to publish to the private repository. It is now published. Let's go to GitHub and see where our files are actually at. So let's go to over here. We now have the Git demo. So Visual Studio Code created that for us. Click on it and we can see our files. Let's make a modification from the GitHub site. Click on source, click on the file, click on edit. and make a modification. Update from GitHub and commit. This is done. Go back to Visual Studio Code. Over here we see various options. An option that we need was the pull. Push is to push our changes into GitHub. Pull means pull the changes from GitHub over here. We can see the code updates. The change is now here. Let's view the Git log. And we can see our commit from GitHub. So all the steps that we did corresponds exactly to what we did from the terminal, but you can do the same thing from within Visual Studio Code. You could also still do the commands from the terminal. So these two methods are compatible. So I hope this will help you out get started with Git and GitHub with using Visual Studio Code.